You frightened me just a little bit. Numbers 10, 10. Listen up, please, listen up. Numbers 10, 10. Also in the day of your gladness and in your solemn days and in the beginnings of your months, you shall blow with the trumpets over your ascending smoke offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings that they may be to you for a memorial before your Elohim. I am Yahuwah Elohekim. Praise ya. The sweet sound. We'll actually be reading about Numbers 10, 10 in our Torah portion today in just a little bit. But let's, uh, let's, let's offer up a memorial. Let's offer up a prayer to the Most High. Please stop all conversations right now. Please. Thank you. Father Yahuwah Most High, we come before you in Yahushua's name, and we just want to thank you, Father, for opening our eyes to your truth, for sending your Son that we may have salvation for giving us your word, even the word that you hid on purpose for your remnant in the last days to grow, Father. We thank you for this community. We thank you for this congregation. We thank you for this building and allowing us to worship you in spirit and in truth, O Yahuwah, Most High. Father, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be obeyed, and we want to do it out of our love for you, Father, not out of rewards, but because we love you and we want to walk in righteousness as you've ordained for your people to do. Father, Help us to be a light to the nations, Father, to restore the tribes of Jacob to your service, Father, to re repair the breach, to restore the foundations of many generations. Father, Yahuwah Most High, we just come before you as an assembly that loves you. And Father, we just ask that you would mark your people across the four corners of the earth that are walking in your righteous commandments, your Shabbat, and calling upon you in spirit and truth. And Father, we ask that your Ruach would be upon all of us here and all those listening to drive out the enemy out of our lives, to root out the works of the flesh, to abide in the, the works and the fruit of the Spirit, the Ruach. And Father, we just ask you to empower us to do so. In the name of Yahushua, Amen. amen. Hallelujah. So, uh, something that we were talking about at Shavuot, we were emphasizing spirit and truth. A lot of us, we focus so much on the truth, 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 because we've been lied to so much, so naturally, we're gravitating to truth. We can't leave out the spirit side. And that's something that we, I really was thinking about at, during Shavuot is I really want to focus on the spirit aspect w as well without leaving the path of the truth, but really intertwining the spirit in our walk. And so let's, let's start with John 4. And I want to talk about, we're going to talk about uh, worshiping him in spirit and truth. We're going to talk about the fruits of the spirit. John 4. And while you're turning there, what, uh, what I feel is laid on my heart is we're going to do a nine-part study on the nine different fruits of the Spirit, and today we're going to start with love, right? So now we know what we're going to study for the next couple weeks, the fruits of the Spirit. John 4, 20 through 24, this is the woman at the well, the Samaritan, our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Yahushua said unto her, woman... Believe me, the hour comes when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you know not what, but we know what we worship, for salvation is the Yahudim. But the hour comes and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks such to worship him. Elohim is a spirit, and they that worship him must Worship him in spirit and truth. This is not like a, well, if you feel led, then work. No, this is a must. This is from our master, our commander, our king, our high priest says we must worship him in spirit and truth. So if that's the case, we better get busy with worshiping him that way. We're focusing a lot on the truth side. I want to also focus on the spirit side. Let's go to Galatians 5, please. Galatians 5, we're going to start at verse 13. Galatians 5, 13.
For brethren, you have been called unto freedom. Only use not freedom for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the Torah is fulfilled in one word. Even this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour another, which I'll be honest, the Torah movement is plagued with, Take heed that you be not consumed of one another. This I say then, walk in the Ruach, the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law, or under the condemnation of the law. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. And as you probably recognize, all those characteristics are Torah-breaking characteristics. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, Shalom, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. And they that are of Mashiach have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lusts. If we live in the Ruach, let us also walk in the Ruach. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, or envying one another. So let's, brothers and sisters, let's talk about Love. So, love, what is it? I think this is a good time, especially to talk about love. Uh, during this month in the world, what's the world celebrating? Pride, right? Pride month. And it's focused on a, a completely ruined definition of what love really means. See, the devil is really tricky. He doesn't have to change a whole lot. All he has to do is change just the meaning of this, the meaning of that. Oh, the Sabbath, well, from the last day to the first day, it's just little small changes, right? And so love, the world defines love as pretty much whatever goes. Whatever your fancy is, that's love, right? So the world's version or the world teaches love is emotions and lust, essentially. So what is love? Don't sing that song, please. Let's go to Exodus 20. Let's look at the Father's definition of love. Exodus 20. This is the giving of the ten words, the ten commandments. We'll begin here. This, the, this word that love that we're going to read in Exodus 20 is the second time the word love was ever used in the scriptures. The first time was the love that, that Jacob had for uh, Rachel. This is the second time the word love is used. Exodus 20. So if we can't rely on how the world teaches us to love, what can we rely on? The word. Exodus 20, verse 5. says, You shall not bow down yourself to them, nor serve them, for I, Yahweh, your Elohim, am a jealous Elohim, visiting the iniquity or lawlessness of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, which we know is the opposite of love, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So we can know, even by this one verse, because we have two witnesses, those that hate him are those who work iniquity, are lawless people. And those who love him are the ones that keep his commandments. Let's go to John 14, and we'll see that there's nothing new under the sun. Messiah taught the same thing. John 14. And hopefully by the end of today or by the end of this message, we'll recognize there's many angles or many facets of love. It's not just one thing. John 14, verse 16. And we'll see here that we know the comforter is the spirit. And I will pray to the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world sees me no more, but you see me, because I live, and you shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. He that ha Listen carefully. He that has my commandments and keeps them, 
He it is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of by my Father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Judas said unto him, not Iscariot, Master, how is it that you will manifest yourself unto us and not to the world? Yahushua answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loves me not keeps not my sayings. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. So his saying, so we know that love is equated to keeping the commandments. Love is equated to keeping the, say, the sayings of Messiah, which he reinforces the Torah, of course. And so that if he says, hey, clothe the naked, clothe the naked, that's love. Feed the poor, that's love. And many other things, of course, we know he says. Verse 25, these things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Ruach HaKodesh, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And we know that the Father loves us because he gives us the good gift. And that good gift is the Ruach, which teaches us his commandments. Let's go to 2 John. It's been a while since I've been in 2 John. I freely admit that. 2 John. So we have love in our hearts. We can display the fruits of the spirit of love by keeping the commands of the Father. 2 John 1, uh, 2 John 1, 1 through 6 says this, The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth. Which the truth is the Torah. And not I only, but also all they that have known the truth for the truth's sake, which dwells in us and shall be with us forever. Grace be to you, mercy and peace from Elohim the Father and from the Master, Yahushua HaMashiach, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly that I have found your children walking in truth as we have received a commandment for the Father. And now I beseech you, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto you, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. And here we go. Biblical definition. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. Which makes sense because Paul says if we walk in the spirit, we're not under the law. Why is that? We know the law is spiritual and good and set apart. Let's go to 1 John now. So we know that we love Yah by keeping his commandments, which is important because the Pharisees were harshly rebuked. Because he says, you come close to me with your mouth and with your lips do honor me, but your heart is far from me. In vain, keeping the commandments of men. So he's basically saying, you don't love me. You love your traditions. You love the traditions of your fathers. 1 John 5, 2 through 3. Here's more biblical definitions. By this, we know that we love the children of Elohim. When we love Elohim and keep his commandments. For this is the love of Elohim that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. And we're starting to figure that out, aren't we? Praise Yah. Let's go to Romans 13. Romans 13. Okay, Romans 13, verse 8 says this. Oh, no man anything but to love one another. For he that loves another has fulfilled the Torah. And now he goes on to explain the same thing that we already know. For this, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love works no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the Torah. Hallelujah. I want to read... I want to read a passage from the book of Gad the Seer. I know most of you don't have it, so but check this out. Uh, this is Gad the Seer, chapter 8. By the way, Gad the Seer was mentioned in 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles? 2 Chronicles, okay. Uh, amazing book. This is just more of the heart of David. And here we go. Gad the Seer, chapter 8, verse 9. Listen. Remember and obey the Torah of Moshe, the man of Elohim, so that you will live a blessed life all of your days. 
Ask your fathers and they will teach you. Ask your elders and they will instruct you. Do not just listen to the law, but be strong and valiant to obey all of it. Hearing is like the seed, but a deed shows that the seed has taken root in you. Then it then becomes a tree of belief which produces the fruit of true righteousness. What becomes of a smelly rotten seed if no root will come out of it? So hurry, be quick to hear and act. For if you are a true seed, if you have belief and righteousness, then Yahweh will bless you with all shalom. Now listen carefully. It's easy to keep Torah by yourself, but around others it's a different story, especially online. Listen to this. Live in shalom with each other. Love the deeds and those created in the image of Yahuwah like your own selves because it is a sign that you love the creator if you love his creation. You cannot take hold of the one but withdraw your hand from the other. Love Yahuwah and also man so that it will be well with you all the days of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we proclaim so much love to the Father, but do we love each other? Do we respect each other? Do we honor each other? Do we look to each other's own needs? Or are we always looking self-centeredly? Like, what do I need? How about our prayers? Are they self-centered? Or are they for others? Only you can answer that question. Now let's go to, let's go to the treasure chest of love. 1 Corinthians 13. Let's go. 1 Corinthians 13. What an exciting day. We get to talk about loving each other. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tony's excited. I can tell. Yeah. Ebedia is excited. I can tell. Praise you. A lot of you are. I see smiles. There's love in the room. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Omar. Okay. Oh, yeah. There it is. All right. First Corinthians 13. Now, listen. This is so important for our journey right now. As we pursue truth and as personalities clash and there's difference of opinions and all these kind of things, right? Really take hold of what's going on in our communities today. If I speak with the tongues of mankind and of angels but do not have love, I've become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Ruth, is that going to be enjoyable? A clanging cymbal or a, right? No way, noisy gong, no way. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. So it doesn't matter how much truth we absorb, and if we don't have love for each other, we ain't going to make it, period. And if I give away all my possessions to charity, and if I surrender my body so that I may glory, but do not have love, it does me no good. Now here are the qualities of love. So... What is love? It's patient. It's kind. It is not jealous. Love does not brag. It is not arrogant. It does not act disgracefully. It does not seek its own benefit. It is not provoked. It does not keep an account of wrongs suffered. It does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It keeps every confidence. It believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But if there are gifts of prophecy, they will be done away with. If there are tongues, they will cease. If there is knowledge, it will be done away with. For we know in part and prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away with. When I was a child, I used to speak like a child, think like a child, reason like a child. When I became a man, I did away with childish things. Now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully, just as I also have been fully known. But now, faith, hope, and love remain, these three, but the greatest of these is love. These are the weightier matters that Messiah was talking about. He's talking to the Pharisees, he's like, you're so careful to tithe mint and anise and cumin, but you forgot the weightier matters of the, the Torah. Love, mercy, and justice, these ought you to have done and not leave the others undone. These are what he considers the weighty matters. This will really be what, in the time of judgment, when we each appear before the throne, he says this is what's going to weigh more. Not the perfect calendar or the perfect pronunciation or getting exactly right which books are scripture and which is not. It's our love for each other. And this is the message that Messiah was trying to share and his disciples. Somewhere that message got lost. Messiah came to change the hearts of the people. I want to read uh, a passage from the book of Nazarene, uh, chapter 20, verse 79. And this is a discourse between Pilate and 
the uh, where are we at? Looking for my right tab here. No, it didn't pull up. Okay, let me try it again. Um, anybody have the book of Notre Dame here? Thank you. That was love. Okay, so this is the discourse at the judgment seat. This is the Pharisees and Pilate speaking. Pilate said, you are a per he's talking to the Pharisees and Sadducees, you are a perverse race, overconcerned with unworldly things and ensnaring yourselves in your own net of goodness. You cannot even agree on the dates of your own festivals or the nature of your Elohim. Instead of heroes, you have saints, yet your saintliness makes you unsaintly. You all agree to seek the truth, but dispute which path to follow and so get nowhere. You agree to follow your Elohim, but some say we go this way and others say we go another. What you say today about this man, you said yesterday about another. Your laws are a maze which I will not attempt to negotiate. Your thoughts are devious and your hearts an unreadable scroll. I am unfortunate in my governorship. Wow. And I have to ask you, is there any remnant of that kind of behavior today? Back then you had the Sadducees and the Pharisees and you had the Essenes and they all disagreed and they all argued with each other and they were enemies. They only came together because of their equal hatred for Messiah. Remember that saying, the enemy of, the en the enemy of my enemy is my friend? That's what happened to them. And they, all they were doing was busy arguing with each other, hating each other because this sect believed that and that sect believed this. Is there any of that going on today? Sh does it need to be done away with? Yes. Hallelujah. And that's going to be one of our missions here with Hebrew Fest is to unite people, not uniting on calendars or pronunciation. We're going to be uniting and praising to the Most High. Hallelujah. Thank, thank you for loving me this morning. <laughs> What was that? Was that Tim? Praise God. All right, let's go to Ezekiel 36. So in Hebrews, it says that while you're turning to Ezekiel 36, in Hebrews it says that the blood of bulls and goats can never take away sins, but the blood of Messiah could, and it cleansed our conscience, giving us, I believe, that new heart, a new heart that desires to walk in his ways, maybe even a new heart that desires to have Love and shalom with each other. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 36, 26 says this. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my ruach within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Let's go to John 13. John 13. We're going to be all over the scriptures today. John 13. Who's having fun yet reading the scriptures together? <laughs> Praise ya. All right, John 13, 34. John 13, 34. A new or a fresh commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have perfect doctrine. Oh, wait, no. Oh, hold on. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. Let's walk in that. Let's walk in that. Let's go to John 15. John 15, 17. John 15, 17, these things I command you that you love one another. So if you are struggling with this, this study is to help each other because I'm not perfect in the fruits of the Spirit. I want to be, and that's why I want to embark on this study together with you. If you struggle to love your neighbor, admit your fault before Yahuwah. In the book of Elijah the prophet, it says, if you are willing to admit your faults before him or your weaknesses before him, he can turn your weaknesses into strength. I'm a witness to that myself in my own life. Let's go to Leviticus 19. And we'll see that this love 
This love ordeal here is nothing new. Leviticus 19, 16. Leviticus 19, 16 through 18 says this, You shall not go up and down as a talebearer among your people, neither shall you stand against the blood of your neighbor, I am Yahuwah. You shall not hate your brother in your heart. You shall in any wise rebuke your neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. You shall not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself, I am Yahuwah. And I'll tell you, if you have trouble loving yourself, that's the root. Because if you can't love yourself, how can you love anyone else? And I'm not talking about this new agey self-worship, self-love. But have some respect for yourself, right? But it says here, verse 17. So love, again, we can't glean from the world of what love is. Love is not just waving to your neighbor and saying, hey, howdy neighbor. Hey, took out your trash for you. <laughs> Thanks. That's good stuff, right? But love is also rebuking your neighbor. And when I talk about neighbor, we're talking about within, because Paul says we're not to judge without the body. We're only to judge within, right? So if you see your brother stumbling, a sin unto death, as, as John says, we should lovingly rebuke our neighbor, right? Because think about this. If you knew there was a road, and the road led to like a Thelma and Louise, like, you know, cavern, and if the road ends and like someone's going to drive off the road, and you see them pass by, you're like, <laughs> see ya. No. If you see them, you'd be like, whoa, 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 stop. The road's out. You're going to die. So how about in a similar way, if we see somebody who's sinning, right, we can say, hey, hey, brother, let me chat with you for just a minute, if you don't mind. Um, I, this is what I saw what was going on. This is what the word says. You know, do you mind? Can we have a conversation about it? Uh, um, you, however, you, you obviously pray about it. If you see someone and you know you need to rebuke them, pray about it. But do so in meekness and love and humility and long suffering. Otherwise, your message is going to be lost and you're going to lose your brother. Go to verse 34 of the same chapter. Leviticus 19, same chapter. Leviticus 19, 34. But the stranger that dwells with you shall be unto you as one born among you. And you shall love him as yourself, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am Yahweh Elohim. There's also another plague in, the, in this movement of Yahweh that people are being elitists about their blood lineage. And people are lesser beings because of the color of their skin or their nationality or whatever. Even in the old days, he says right here, even the stranger that dwells among you shall be as one, one born among you. Hallelujah. No racism in Yahweh's kingdom. It's true, very true. Called his own people a stranger, that's right, before he called them. Let's go to Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. So love is lovingly rebuking our neighbor through the Matthew 18 process, one-on-one. -on -one. Hebrews 12, 4 through 7 tells us that when the Father corrects us or chastens us, that's love. Verse 4, Hebrews 12, 4, you have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks unto you as unto children, my son, despise not the chastening of Yahuwah, nor faint when you are rebuked of him. For whom Yahuwah chastens, I'm sorry, for whom Yahuwah loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, Elohim deals with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chastens not? So in this way, we love our children by chastening them. This love that the world pro uh, projects, this coddling, is not love. But if you love your child, you will not withhold the rod of correction. Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Matthew 
Let's remind ourselves of what happens to people at the second coming of Messiah that have no love for each other. Matthew 24, 45. 45. Who then is the faithful and sensible servant whom his master put in charge of his household servants to give them food at proper times? Blessed is that servant whom his master finds so doing when he comes. Let us all be named like that. Truly I say to you that he will put him in charge of all his possessions. Whoa. But if that evil servant says in his heart, Ah, oh, my master is not coming for a long time. And he begins to beat his fellow slaves. And he eats and drinks with those who are habitually drunk. Then the master of that servant will come on a day that he does not expect and at an hour that he does not know, and he will cut him in two and assign him a place with the hypocrites. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And we talked about this a couple months ago, and I asked you all the question. When it says, uh, when he smites his fellow servant, do we think that's literally just talking about punching each other in the face? Or is that could also be with our words, smiting each other with our words and our actions? Is that possible? I see a lot of nods, yes. I agree as well. How embarrassing, as I said before, a couple months ago, how embarrassing if we go through this whole walk of coming out of the world, throwing off Babylon, throwing off Egypt, changing our lives, molding it, conforming it to the image of the Most High, keeping the Shabbats and the feast days, having these strings hanging from our pants, doing all these different things, but we have no love for our neighbor. And at his coming, he's like, you're not coming in. You had no love for your fellow neighbor. All you did was beat each other with the word. You're out. You. You may, your doctrine may not have been perfect, but you loved your neighbor. Come on in. Come to the front. That's who I believe. That's who I believe we serve. Let's go to James 3. The focus on truth and the lack of love is plaguing this movement. Let it not be named among us anymore. James 3.13. James 3.13. Listen up. Listen up. Who among you is wise and understanding? Let him show by his good behavior, his deeds in gentleness and of wisdom. Our behavior, we can, exp we can show our love. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth. This wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but is earthly, natural, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every evil thing. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then shalom-loving, gentle, reasonable, and full of mercy and good fruits, impartial, free of hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in shalom by those who make shalom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to 2 Peter 1. And Peter, I love this passage because Peter is going to show us, once again, there's order even to our walk and refinement of faith. Our sanctification has order. And you'll be surprised... What, what the end of our faith should look like. Just take a wild guess of what everything we learn should lead to. Take a wild guess. Anyone? We'll see. I guess we'll just read it then. All right, 2 Peter 1. Simon Peter, a bond servant and apostle of Yahushua HaMashiach, to those who have received a faith of the same kind as ours by the righteousness of our Elohim and Savior, Yahushua HaMashiach, Grace and shalom be multiplied to you in the knowledge of our Elohim and of Yahusha, our Messiah, for his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. Through these, he has granted us to his precious and magnificent promises so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world on account of lust. Now, remember that, account of the world, on account of lust, that is the world's definition of love right now, is basically the lust in your heart, whatever you feel, hey, we're not going to judge you. Do what you want. Do as thou wilt. 
Verse 5, for now, I'm sorry, for this very reason also, applying all diligence. Now listen, this is the stepping stones that Peter is telling us of how our faith and our sanctification is supposed to go. Listen cl closely. For this very, very reason also, applying all diligence in your faith, supply moral excellence or virtue. And in your moral excellence, knowledge. And in your knowledge, self-control. And in your self-control, perseverance. And in your perseverance, godliness. And in your godliness, brotherly kindness. And in your brotherly kindness, love. What is Peter saying right here? As we continue in faith, our maturity should end up in love for each other. And if it's not, we've gone wrong somewhere. We've gone off the path somewhere. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they do not make you useless nor unproductive in the true knowledge of our master, Yahusha HaMashiach. For the one who lacks these things, oh, what happened here? For the one who lacks these qualities is blind or short-sighted, having forgotten his purification from his former sins. Therefore, brothers and sisters, be all the more diligent to make certain about his calling and choice of you. For as long as you practice these things, you will never stumble. For in this way, the entrance into the eternal kingdom of our master and savior, Yahushua HaMashiach, will be abundantly supplied to you. Therefore, I will always be ready to remind you of these things, even though you already know them and have been established in the truth which is present with you. And that's what we're doing today. Verse 12 is what we're doing today. You all know love, but we're going over it again because this is the basic principles of what we're supposed to be doing. Hallelujah. Let's go to, uh, actually, I'm probably going to just read this for you. This is the Testament of Zebulun. For those of you that may be new, uh, there's a, uh, a, a collection of books called the Testament of the Twelve Patriarchs. Um, a couple of them were found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. This is the last words of the Twelve Sons of Jacob. This is Zebulun. Zebulun is going to talk about sympathy and compassion, which are virtues that come forth from the very basic principle of love. Would everyone agree that mercy and compassion is from the root of love? Yes. Zebulun chapter 2. And now, children, I command you to keep the commands of Yahuwah and to show mercy to your neighbors and to have compassion towards all, not towards men only, but also towards beasts. For all things sake, Yahuwah blessed me, and when all my brethren were sick, I escaped without sickness. For Yahuwah knows the purposes of each. Have therefore compassion in your hearts, my children, because even as a man does to his neighbor, even so also will Yahuwah do to him. For the sons of my brethren were sickening and were dying on account of Joseph, because they showed not mercy in their hearts. But my sons were preserved without sickness, as you know. And when I was in the land of Canaan, by the seacoast, I made a catch of fish for Jacob, my father. And when many were choked in the sea, I continued unhurt. I was the first to make a boat to sail upon the sea, for Yahweh gave me understanding and wisdom therein. He didn't say the first boat, but the first sailboat. And I let down a rudder behind it, and I stretched a sail upon another upright piece of wood in the midst. And I sailed therein along the shores, catching fish for the house of my father until we came to Egypt. And through compassion, I shared my catch with every stranger. And if a man were a stranger or sick or aged, I boiled the fish and dressed them well. And offered them to all men, as every man had need, grieving with and having compassion on them. Wherefore also Yahweh satisfied me with abundance of fish when catching fish. For he that shares with his neighbor receives manifold more from Yahweh. For five years I caught fish and gave thereof to every man whom I saw, and sufficed for all the house of my father. And in the summer I caught fish, and in the winter I kept sheep with my brethren. Now I will declare unto you what I did. I saw a man in distress through nakedness in wintertime and had compassion on him and stole away a garment secretly from my father's house and gave it to him who was in distress. Do you therefore, my children, from that which Elohim bestows upon you, show compassion and mercy without hesitation to all men and give to every man with a good heart. And if you have not wherewithal to give him that needs, have compassion for him in the bowels of mercy." I know that my hand fought, found not the wherewithal to give him and that needed. And I walked with him weeping for seven furlongs, and my bowels yearned towards him in compassion. Have therefore yourselves also, my children, compassion towards every man with mercy, that Yahweh also may have compassion and mercy upon you. Because also, 
in the last days, Elohim will send his compassion on the earth. And wheresoever he finds bowels of mercy, he dwells in him. For in the degree in which a man has compassion on his neighbors, in the same degree has Yahuwah also upon him. And when we went down into Egypt, Joseph bore no malice against us. To whom taking heed, do you also, my children, approve yourselves without malice and love one another. And do not set down an account each one of you evil against his brother. For this breaks unity and divides all kindred and troubles the soul and wears away the countenance. Listen to this. Observe therefore the waters and know when they flow together. They sweep along stones, trees, earth, and other things. But if they are divided into many streams, the earth swallows them up and they vanish away. Brothers and sisters, let us not have these divisions among us anymore. Let's go to Jasher 22. Yashar, or Jasher 22. Everybody turn to Jasher 22 now. Y'all thought Johnny was the only one that could do voices in here, huh? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Jasher 22 Messiah, everybody remember in here when Messiah said if you are the seed of Abraham you will do the deeds of Abraham praise God well here's a little snippet of some of the deeds of Abraham and how he loved all people Jasher 22, 11 through 13 and Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba and he made to it four gates facing the four sides of the earth and he planted a vineyard in it so that if a traveler came to Abraham he entered any gate which was in the road and remained there and ate and drank and satisfied himself and then departed. For the house of Abraham was always open to the sons of men that passed and repassed, who came daily to eat and drink in the house of Abraham. And any man who had hunger and came to Abraham's house, Abraham would give him bread that he might eat and drink and be satisfied. And anyone that came naked to his house, he would clothe with garments as he might choose and give him silver and gold and make known to him Yahuwah who had created him in the earth. This did Abraham all his life. And we should take note of what Abraham did. He clothed, he fed, he took care of, and in the midst of that, he showed him Yahuwah. This is why I did this unto you, because I love Yahuwah and I love my neighbor. Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Matthew 25, verse 31. We'll see that people that don't do the deeds of Abraham won't get in. For those of you that read Jasher, you'll know that Sodom and Gomorrah did the very opposite of Abraham. When a stranger would come in, they would beat them up, take their clothes, take all their money, and no one was allowed to feed them. What happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? Burned in the fire. We're going to see that here. Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from the other, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Master, when did we see you hungry, or fed you, or thirsty, and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger, or took you in, or naked, and clothed you? Or when did we see you sick, or in prison, and came unto you? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto the one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Now what happens to the goats, those who don't do these things? In the fire. Prepared for the devil and his angels. No love, no kingdom. Let's go to Matthew 5. Matthew 5.
But here's the challenge. Like Messiah says, it's easy to love those who love you. But here's the challenge for the saints. Matthew 5, 43. You have heard that it has been said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he makes his sun to rise on the evil and on the good. And sends the rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the publicans the same. And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. Be you therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So listen, there's many enemies of the Most High out there. But we're called to love. And it's hard. But once you, once you begin to do it, it becomes easy and it becomes natural. And he says that when we do this, the promise is that we become, become the, the sons of the Most High. I don't know about you, but I want to be there. I want to be a son of the Most High. So the next time someone comes at you, slanders you, gossips against you, does something evil to you, drop to your knees and pray for them. When all the people wanted to stone Moses, what did Moses do? He dropped to his knees and prayed. That's humility, and that's love. Moshe loved the people. Yahusha loved the people. Um, let's go to the Nats oh, uh, I'm going to read Natsurim 9, 39 through 40. I actually have the link now. Okay. I'm going to read you, Nats I'm gonna read you the Natsurim version of the passage we just read. Natsurim 9, 39 through 40. I had all this tabbed out, but it reset for some reason. Okay, here we go. Listen up. This is the book of Nazarene. The Torah you have says, love your neighbors and hate your enemies. But I tell you to love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you and pray for those who deceive or persecute you. For if you only give love for love, this cannot be claimed as a meritorious thing. When even criminals return the love of those who love them. If you only repay good with good, dealing fairly only with those who treat you likewise, how can merit be claimed for this? Which is no more than criminals do. It is the same if you only give to those who give to you. For criminals give to their own kind. Can you stand by and let it be said that criminals treat each other better than do godly men? L listen, now listen to this. This is like a nugget of wisdom that I haven't found anywhere else. Everyone know the term? Um... Hate the sin, not the sinner. Anybody ever heard that? Check this out. This is called, this passage is like love with boundaries. Love your enemies, but not their faults. Love who, those who hate you, but concede nothing to their wickedness. Think about that for a second. So a lot of you have asked me, like we, we've talked quite a bit about loving your parents, even if, you know, they're, they've been rough to you, whatever. You can still have boundaries, but you can still show love. Hallelujah. Okay, let's, we want to pray over? Okay. All right. Pause. Come pray like Most high. Oh, Abba, we just come before you in Yahushua's name. And Father, we just, we come before your throne by the blood of Mashiach. And Father, we just know all things are possible by the blood of Mashiach. And Father, we just ask by the faith that your word be true today, that if anyone is sick amongst us, that the elders of the call of assembly would anoint them with oil and pray over them, that they would be healed. Father, we just pray for Harley, a, a daughter of Yashrael, that whatever is plaguing her, whatever is attacking her, would be gone in the name of Yahushua and would flee from this place, Father, and that she would be healed at once in the name of Yahushua. On this Shabbat, Father, 
You say that your gates are open on the Shabbats and new moons. Father, hear the prayer of your people. In Yahushua's name, hallelujah. Okay, let's go ahead and give her her space. Let's take our seats. Everyone else, let's take our seats. We're going to finish up. I'm almost done. Worship team, if you want to come up here, we're almost done. I'm going to read one last passage. It's from the Testament of Benjamin. But before we do, I just want to recognize, remember, Messiah said the two greatest commandments are what? That's right. Loving Yah and loving your neighbor. Let's not forget. It's... Let's never forget the weightier matters of the Torah, love being the most prominent. I want to read the Testament of Benjamin, chapter 1, for you. Uh, Benjamin, in this, in this, mostly talks about his brother Joseph, who is an, ex an excellent example and was a foreshadow of Messiah. And he says this, Do you also, therefore, my children, love Yahuwah of Elohim and earth and keep his commandments following the example of the good and set-apart man, Yosef? And let your mind be unto good, even as you know me. For he that has his mind right sees all things rightly. Fear Yahuwah and love your neighbor. And even though the spirits of Satan claim to afflict you with every evil, yet shall they not have dominion over you, even as they had not over Yosef, my brother. How many men wished to slay him, and Elohim shielded him. For he that fears Elohim and loves his neighbor cannot be smitten by the spirit of Belial, being shielded by the fear of Elohim. Nor can he be ruled over by the device of men or beasts, for he is helped by Yahuwah through the love which he has towards his neighbor. For Yosef also besought our father that he would pray for his brethren, that Yahuwah would not impute to them as sin whatever evil they had done unto him. Think about that. All the wrong they did to Yosef, and Yosef was like, Father, please pray for them and forgive them. Instead of like, Father... Can you believe what they did to me? Huh. They should be cast out of Asherel. No. He said, Father, pray for them. And, this, and in this way, Jacob cried out, My good child, you have prevailed over the bowels of your father, Jacob. And he embraced him and kissed him for two hours, saying, In you shall be fulfilled the prophecy of heaven concerning the Lamb of Elohim and Savior of the world, and that a blameless one shall be delivered up for lawless men. And a sinless one shall die for ungodly men in the blood of the covenant, for the salvation of the nations and of Israel, and shall destroy Belial and, and his servants. See, therefore, my children, the end of a good man. Be followers of his compassion, therefore, with a good mind, that you also may wear crowns of glory. For the good man doesn't have a dark eye, for he shows mercy to all men, even if they're sinners. And though they devise with evil intent concerning him, by doing good he overcomes evil, being shielded by Elohim, and he loves the righteous as his own soul. If anyone is glorified, he doesn't envy him. If anyone is made rich, he's not jealous. If anyone is valiant, he praises him. The virtuous man, he praises. On the poor man, he has mercy. On the weak, he has compassion. And unto Elohim, he sings praises. And him that has the grace of a good spirit, he loves as his own soul. If, therefore, you also have a good mind, then will both wicked men be at shalom with you, and the profligate will reverence you and turn unto good, and the covetous will not only cease from their inordinate desire, but even give the objects of their covetousness to them that are afflicted. If you do well, even the unclean spirits will flee from you, and the beasts will dread you. For where there is reverence for good works and light in the mind, even darkness flees away from him. 
For if anyone does violence to a holy man, he repents. For the holy man is merciful to his reviler. <whistles> Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Drop to your knees. Pray for them. For the holy man is merciful even to his reviler and holds his peace. If anyone betrays a righteous man, the righteous man prays. Even though for a little time he's humbled, yet not long after he appears far more glorious as was Yosef, my brother. The inclination of the good man is not in the power of the deceit of the spirit of Belial, for the angel of Shalom guides his soul. And he gazes not, on, not passionately upon corruptible things, nor gathers together riches through a desire of pleasure. He delights not in pleasure. He grieves not his neighbor. He satisfies not himself with luxuries. He errs not in the uplifting of his eyes, for Yahuwah is his portion. The good inclination receives not glory nor dishonor from men, and it knows not any guile or lie or fighting or reviling, for Yahuwah dwells in him and lights up his soul, and he rejoices towards all men always. Brothers and sisters, I pray that through this study, you have a little better understanding of love and how to love Yah and how to love each other. Hallelujah. Let's do it with all of our heart, soul, and mind. Let's stand up. All right, everybody. We're going to get our hearts and minds prepared to worship Yah, the Most High, our Elohim, who deserves all praise and honor and glory. Amen? He deserves all glory. And so we're going to start out by lifting our hands up to the Shamaim, lifting our hands up to heaven. And we're going we're gonna to imitate what this might be like when we say hallelujah in those end times as the whole world comes together and praises him and says with a loud voice, hallelujah, amen? So let's, let's raise our hands up, and on the count of three, I want you to give the loudest hallelujah you can, okay? Shake the ground. We're, we're literally underneath our feet. Shake the, the whole part of Galena that we're in, and that everybody would be like, whoa, what's going on over there? I want people to come in here wondering. Let's do it. Let's, let's just let's proclaim hallelujah over sickness, over disease, over uh, this time of worship, over people who are, are struggling. Let's proclaim hallelujah in the face of our trials, amen? All right, ready? One, two, three. All praise in the most high, hallelujah, amen. I want to, real quick, we're going to sing this song called Be Careful. And we were just talking about what it means to love. What it means to love like Yahuwah call, commands us to love. And I, I feel like be careful, what, it, what it's really saying in this song, it, I mean, this is scripture, we're reading scripture. Uh, is, it's saying, you know, be careful to follow those, those, those commands, even those commands that we just, just look over, we look past real, real fast. This is to love Yah, right? To love Yah is to keep His commandments. To lean not on our own understanding, but to trust in Him. Right? Amen? All right. Well, we're going we're to sing this song. If you know the actions, please do them. Ryan? Wait, Ryan's over there. He's got a child in his hands. I don't know if you, you may not be able to. And where, where is that? Where is that? Is Alice here? You got him? All right. All right. So we'll, follow, we'll follow her, and she'll, uh, she'll give us some good actions here. So follow her up. Be careful, Yah's people, to follow all of His ways. Be careful, Yah's people, to follow all of His ways. You are not to turn aside to the left or to the right. You are not to turn aside to the left or to the right. All right, be careful now. Come on. Be careful, God's people, to follow all of His ways. Be careful, God's people, to follow all of His ways. You are not to turn aside to the left or to the right. You are not to turn aside to the left or to the right. You must walk in all of His ways. They are what your Elohim commanded. 
you may live a long and prosperous life for all of your days in the land which you inherit. So be careful, God's people, to follow all of His ways. Be careful, God's people, to follow all of His ways. You are not to turn aside to the left or to the right. You are not to turn aside to the left or to the right. You must walk, ready? Oh. You must walk in all of His ways. They are who are your Elohim commanded. That you may live a long and prosperous life for all of your days in the land which you inherit. So you gotta be careful. God's people to follow all of His ways. Be careful, God's people to follow all of His ways. You are not to turn aside to the left or to the right. You are not to turn aside to the left or to the right. To the left or to the right. Oh, to the left, or to the right, or oh, to the left, or oh, to the right. Yeah. Hallelujah! Amen, amen, amen. How many of us in this room are in a season of waiting, of patience, long suffering? How many of you are in this, in this room are struggling and, and just, I'm just waiting on him to give you an answer? I know I am. And many of us have been in this season for a long time or have been just, are just going into this season of, of just trusting in him in all things. Trusting in him and relying on him and not on your own understanding. And that is so, it's so easy to say, but it's so difficult to do. So when we say this, when we sing this next song, you know, we're singing, I'll wait for you, oh yeah, I'll wait for you. I'm on my knees. Yeah, would you lead me to your holy place? I want you to understand what that means. His, so the holy place that we have is not a temple, right? The temple, right? The holy place we have is, is his, you know, we're, we're called his temple now, right? We're called his temple in, the, in this life that we're living right now. And the holy place, the holy of holies that we can, uh, like, try to even begin to imagine is right with us is right here. His holiness, His presence is right with us. And if we are truly following His ways, if we're truly obeying Him, if we're leaning not on our understanding, then maybe His presence will be with you. Maybe His presence will be inside of you. Maybe you will be worthy of receiving His presence in the Spirit. And I pray every single one of us in this room right now receives His presence, receives this, this place that is, this feels almost as intimate as the Holy of Holies. When that veil is torn, in the temple, when Yeshua died, the Holy of Holies was opened up. It was revealed so that all men, that all nations and all people could receive Him. And you have been given that, that incredible gift to receive His presence. So while we're waiting for Him, as we're in this season, we just ask, oh yeah, please let your Ruach rain down upon us. May it be uh, with us. It may be over us. May it cover us and shield us. Oh Father, I just ask that people who are seeking you right now would receive you. Would your words come through, Father? Would you speak through us and speak to us and guide us, I pray. May, we, may you put us on our knees and, and may we put, be put in a place where we're humbled and where we only are relying on you. I pray, oh yeah, please guide us. We wait for you, yeah. It's in your name we pray, amen. Ready for the change. Oh, yeah, come lead the way to your holy place Where I know my heart will be laid bare before you 
Oh, Father, you see through all my insecurities and I prove my lack of faith towards you. Oh, Father, do what you please. I want nothing but your spirit and truth, oh, yeah. You're all I need. I believe nothing can stop you. I'm on my knees. Oh, Father, yeah, will you lead me to your holy place? Take everything. Oh, yeah, I'm on my face singing. I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you. Oh, yeah. I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you. To show me the way. You've given me the faith to know you'll lead the way through ocean tall ways like mountains at my feet. Oh, be careful now to take each step of the law in mind. Now I can say, don't worry, it'll be okay, because God has a funny way of changing up my life. Oh, Father, do what you please. I want nothing but your spirit and truth, oh, yeah. You're all I need. I believe nothing can stop you, yeah. I'm on my knees. Oh, Father, yeah, will you lead me to your place? Take everything. Oh, yeah, I'm on my face. You're all I need. I believe nothing can stop you. Oh, oh, Father, do what you please. We believe. I want nothing but your spirit and truth. Oh, yeah. You're all I need. I believe nothing can stop you. Oh, Father, yeah, will you lead me to your holy place? Take everything. Oh, yeah, I'm on my face singing. it. Oh, I'm on my knees. Oh, Father, yeah, will you lead me to your holy place? Take everything. Oh, yeah, I'm on my face singing. Oh,
we wouldn't understand what love really is if this Messiah hadn't shown us. Amen? He shows us truly what love looks like, and he displayed it perfectly for us on the cross, on the stake. He showed us exactly what it means to follow through with loving Yah with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, even to the point of death. And he knew that this had to happen for all creation. He was the firstborn of all creation, and he was the first of the resurrection that will be coming. Amen? And because of him, we have life. We have everlasting life. We need him. We need to rely on him completely. We need him. What are we without Yeshua? Nothing. nothing. We're dead. We're nothing. But he has made us alive. Amen. Oh, we will remember the works of your hands through all generations we've seen your plan to bring back the fold and make us whole again oh yeah by the blood of your son we've been grafted in Oh, merciful Yah, how awesome is your love. Oh, merciful Yah, your Son laid down his life to redeem this broken bride. Oh, the deep gratitude we have for your Son, who gathers the weary and broken and shows them all your love. How lovely is the groom who calls for his sons and daughters. We, are, we offer up our lives like sheep on the altar. The sign laid down his life to redeem this broken pride. And if not for Yeshua, we would all be dead in sin, not alive in grace. And if not for Yeshua, we would never know the way, the truth, the life. And if not for Yeshua, we would all be dead in sin, not alive in grace. And if not for Yeshua, we would never know the way, the truth, the life. And if not for Yeshua, we would all be dead in sin, not alive in grace. And if not for Yeshua, we would never know the way, the truth, the life. And if not for Yeshua. 
So, yeah, we rely on you. You are so good and faithful and true. We love your name, oh, yeah. We love to gather and worship you. Father, I pray that you would just bring your blessing to here today. The blessing of your Kodesh. Bring healing and restoration, conviction. Bring us to our knees. Let us be humbled by you, oh, yeah. May we seek your name. May we seek your truth. We seek your face, so we are, to know you, to love you, to honor you. Father, we know that if we are to love and honor you, that means we are to love our neighbor as ourself. That we're to seek one another's highest good, to put ourselves below one another. Help us, so we are, in this, this time of long suffering and testing and trial to Give us the perseverance that we need, the endurance we need to continue through. You are our strength, our song of deliverance that you sing over us, we have. Thank you for delivering us, for bringing us your rock, guiding us in this world, in this life. We trust in you. We love you, Yah. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.